Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna do something a little different. So we're gonna go and concentrate on the head of the engine. I've got it here set up already. What we're going to do first is just remove some of the brackets, clean it out as much as I can. I've got some diesel there. They're just gonna get some brush and just brush it all down. Yeah, start cleaning her up and see what she looks like. So anyway, let's get to it. this is gonna take me a while so I'm gonna reserve my battery and get it all cleaned up and then I'll start recording again yeah all right now we can see that I've cleaned out the whole surface of the cylinder head and this is the point where you would actually get a straight edge and measure like cross straight through and the other cross then you will be able to see straight away if the head is warped I don't have a straight edge so I won't be doing that today uh, something else I'd like to point out as well usually a lot of people would want to sell cylinder heads online uh, for cheap and they say it's perfectly fine the surface is nice and clean and resurfaced whatever but what they don't tell you is that these things have a minimal thickness how you can usually tell is by these sections right here so there's one two on three on this cylinder head this is the 4g91 when the machining has reached these sections these little like indentations that means that the the, the head is rubbish you have to throw it out it's too thin it'll warp as soon as you get some heat into it it's just going to warp and then cause you all types of issues so if you're buying something online which is just a cylinder head make sure you look at that yeah it may be machined nicely the valves will be clean wh whatever if the head sorry is machined down to these sections it's a throwaway item you can't use it uh, I'm gonna get back to cleaning now what I'm going to do is remove the spark plugs and I'm just gonna wire brush the inside and then afterwards uh, we'll remove the valves and see what the valves what the guys look like inside so let's get to it Drum and bass. You can see I've already cleaned up all of the surfaces on here and on here as well. Now the valves are not completely cleaned and of course I haven't cleaned in between where the valves are because I need to remove the valves which I'm going to do right now. So let's just turn this over. Now usually uh, you need a spring compressor tool which I went to search for and it's over 300 ringgit or 280 ringgit. I'm not gonna pay for something that's very easy to make. So I just made one. As you can see, I just used some galvanized steel. This is a, a diameter big enough to fit over the valve uh, caps, the spring caps, sorry. Yeah, and I just made this bracket to pivot off. It's all cheap steel that I had laying around. So I just cut it up, made it into a valve compressor tool. So let's start using it and see how it works, huh? Here we go. All right, I'll set you guys up a lot closer. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. All right, I'm going to give you an example of how this works. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see because it it's very dark inside there, but I'll try to set up the light so you can see. Using this tool that I made, we're going to compress the valve spring. So I'll push down on it. That's one collar there, and the other one is right uh, stuck. <laughs> there we go. Well, as you can see already, it's come loose, so need to slide this shaft up a little bit. It's very tight. Out of the way, and now we can see there's the top of the uh, spring 
the top of the spring retainer here we got the spring and one of the collets is just there and the other one fell through the bolt hole there so we're gonna move this out of the way and there it is See? and to continue on to show you guys how obsessed I am with putting everything back to where it came from I'm gonna show you what I do to make sure these don't go missing so we got everything here we got the spring the retainer the bottom uh, spacer sorry like that two collets and the valve now what I usually do is for the spring and the two retainers or the spacer and retainers I just get the spring put the bottom one on the bottom the top one on the top and then cable tie them together just like that and then get some tape put it through and then I'll note down what valve this is so this is the exhaust number three so E three just like that yeah and then with the valve and the collets so what I do is just get some tape put the collets back onto the valve where they sit so hold one on the bottom Oops. hold one over the top and then just tape it together that way none of them go missing and then get some more tape wrap it around the middle of the valve and then right on here E3 and then I just keep doing that until I have all of them written down I'm gonna continue with the rest and then start recording again here we go alrighty all done I have removed every single one of the valves valve springs and retainers the head is all open now I've got them all here already labeled just gonna put them in this container yes baby milk container <laughs> uh, yeah keeping all the head stuff in there together including the spark plugs just to stay organized you know so now I can just put it all in one container and yeah close it up should be good but I have run out of time guys uh, I've been here all day you know working half a day and then continuing the other half to do my own engine and I'll check back with you guys next week one shift later All right, here's an example of what I plan to do with this to start off with. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but this section right here, see these? These are just imperfections from the casting when it was uh, first built. Uh, the reason I wanna grind these down is because the oil can comfortably flow down. Here's what it looks like before. And I've already started on this one. As you can see, it's all a lot smoother. So that is the plan. I'm gonna continue doing this and then I'll start recording again when I'm done now that i've done let's say half i can kind of show you an example of what i'm talking about see the middle is all smoothed out and then this is what it looked like before you yeah, see all of that casting and that after this is not an upgrade this is just a personal preference uh, take it as you like i'm going to continue with the rest and then start recording once i've done this side is all done of course i still got those little corners in between there to do i want to continue to point out that this is not a performance upgrade okay this is just a personal ref uh, preference now i'm just going to start porting out the or not sorry not porting i'm going to start cleaning out the runners the choice of tool is just this little stone uh, grinder i got a whole kit so i'm going to use this just to grind this down and clean it up i remember i'm not porting i'm just cleaning it up so anyway i'm going to do this because it's going to take a long time and then I'm going to start recording again and show you a before and after. Yeah? As you know, my Dremel just broke down. I have this little contraption made up. Check it out. <laughs> I still have the extender for the Dremel. Why I like this is because it's very narrow. You can squeeze it into the uh, runners without touching anything. Yeah. So how I've set it up is I've just connected it to the drill just like that. And then of course I cable tied the button so then you, you just adjust to one speed and then I just turn it on at the power point and it works. 
simple setup so you can do this at home as well if you want <laughs> so anyway i'll continue on and then i'll yeah I'll see you later. the light in here you can sort of see what it used to look like I'm not sure the lights are actually helping or not but there you go you can see the casting on the side there so yeah there's all the casting on the side like along the side there well and it's the same on the exhaust so technically I go from this see that casting so then you start just pretty much grinding it bit by bit ah, sorry about that uh, there we can see a bit better so you start grinding it bit by bit the reason you have to use a big circular stone like that yeah, because then you can easily round it off to every section because for example you see this is nice and rounded now that I've grounded it with the stone but then you see when I first start it it's all very uneven so when you use a big circular one it becomes very even like that same with the exhaust now something I noticed as well like if you look at here after I started grinding with the circular stone that little hole just showed up so I'm gonna keep grinding until that's gone that's one of the imperfections of the casting doing this will help the airflow it's not porting it's just cleaning it up it's just rounding it off so then it's a lot smoother of a, uh, of a flow anyway this is very hard to record so I'm just gonna continue on and do all of these till they're all done and then we'll continue on huh? so it's just a quick update all right as we can see now I have done all of the inside part of the runners there's the exhaust side as you can see and that's the inlet yes so I've done the inner part inner half now I was beginning to work on the outer half I've done this one already sort of we still need some smoothing out but we're on our way these ones I haven't touched yet so there you can really tell the difference of how dirty it is compared to how much cleaner it is I didn't port them but I did do some things to modify them for example you see the middle part there I just sharpened that up a little bit just to allow the air to flow better and that one I haven't done yet this one I haven't even started I'm gonna leave it up to there for today because uh, we have an event today at JPM well I will continue recording again next week one eternity later all right now as we can see i have done all of the runners so this is the, the exhaust side you can see they're all done all cleaned and then we have the intake side see they've all been done all been cleaned so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to wire brush all of the valve seats get all the dirt and gunk and everything like that and then I'm gonna pressure wash the engine again sorry not the engine uh, pressure wash the head again get most of the metal shavings that's left inside and also get rid of some of this uh, dirt that's in between here so then I can do I can start doing the valve lapping yeah that's the next step clean these out wash it out then start or then I will clean the valves then start doing the valve lapping so it's a slow process, but it's happening, so not long to go.
I've been doing the valve lapping on this exhaust valve. As you can see, it's all nicely uniformed color. If you compare this to this one, you can see the big difference here. Yeah? So this one's still like kind of shiny and glossy where this is more like a machine finished. That means it's completely filed down and it's uniform all the way around. And if you look at the valve, you can see the difference here between the one that I did compared to a one that I haven't done. So of course, I'm gonna be doing all of this for the rest of the valves and once I finish that then I will continue recording anyway this is gonna take a very long time for me to finish so I'm not gonna bother recording any more of this I'll just get it all done and then continue on from there technically the next step from this will be to get the, the deck resurfaced and then I can start assembling everything so I'm gonna end the video right here remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment tell me what you think of this uh, build so far uh, I know it's taking a long time but like I said I only get to work a couple of hours on a Saturday trying to get as much as I can within the time that I have make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video huh? oh the next video should be assembling the head and the engine so stick around like subscribe and I'll see you next time.